Hi guys, welcome! The Supernovice is a highly versatile job class which takes advantage of nearly every first class skill. In my previous Supernovice video, we talked about the Thunderbolt magic build for farming. This time, we'll dive into one of the physical builds for the Supernovice, the Bash type build. Bash is a single target skill that deals huge melee physical damage to a target. It also has a chance to stun enemies proving it useful in PvP. There are a lot of damage modifiers for Bash which makes farming easier. In this guide, we'll discuss the most important stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and farming tips for the Bash build. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding on how to unleash the true potential of the Supernovus Bash build in the battlefield. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Let's first discuss the recommended stat distribution. You need to prioritize putting points on strength since it is a primary attribute that increases physical attack and therefore increases the damage of the bash skill. Just pump all points on strength early on until you can max it out. Remember though that in order for the damage of bash to be affected by the strength stat, you need to deposit a bongan card in your adventure handbook. Allocating the rest of the points will be up to you. If you have the magic sword advanced rune which adds magic attack in the damage computation of bash, then you may want to put points on intelligence for increased magic attack. If you find it difficult to hit monsters with high flea, then you may add some points on dexterity for increased hit. You can also allot points on dex and luck because every 5 points of either dex or luck will increase your attack by 1 point. If you are using the frost masquerade mask face item, you may also want to balance your stats such that each would have a total of 99. This is because of its frost focus passive effect wherein you'll gain plus 10 attack and plus 1% attack for every attribute that reaches a total of 99. Next, let's discuss the most important skills to get. For the advanced novice skills, you should allocate points on Level 10 Bash which will be your primary farming skill Level 10 Sword Mastery since you'll be using a sword type weapon in this build and this skill gives additional attack when using swords Level 10 Blessing to increase strength, dexterity, and intelligence by 20 points. Level 1 Increase Agility to increase your movement speed when using the Blessing skill. Level 5 Call Spirits to summon Spirit Bombs which will increase attack and ignore death. And lastly, get Level 2 Gloria to unlock Level 2 Imposition Manus which will increase your attack. Later on, when you have extra skill points, you can allot more points for this. Once you've reached job break for you may allocate the additional skill points on the following. Level 20 Bash to further boost the attack damage multiplier of Bash. Level 15 Blessing to further increase your strength, dex, and int. Level 10 Imposition Manus to further amplify your attack. Level 3 Card Attack and Level 3 Enhanced Card to activate card boost when you become a Supernovice. And lastly, get level 1 Magnum Break since using this skill increases attack by 20% for 10 seconds. Once you've changed to a Supernovice, you may get Level 15 Vulture's Eye to increase range by 75% and hit by 30. The increased range of bash may increase the efficiency of farming as you can bash monsters from a longer distance. However, if you still can't one-hit the mobs you're farming, you may want to first improve your damage by allotting points on self buffs such as Level 10 Inspiration which increases all attributes by 10 and also increases hit, attack, and magic attack by 100 for 150 seconds. Level 5 Overthrust which significantly increases your attack by 25%. It can also increase the attack of your allies by 5%. And Level 5 Cart Boost for increased movement speed and attack. Do take note that you need to equip a card to use this skill. As for the remaining skill points, allocation will be up to you. You may opt to max out over thrust, or some advanced novice skills such as increase agility, and improve flee for faster movement speed. Now let's go to runes. Runes are vital for the super novice class as these increase the damage output of our skills. When you're still an advanced novice, you should activate the following runes. First up, we have the 10 Bash and Power runes which will give a total of 100% Bash skill damage. Next, activate the 2 Bash Proficiency runes which will reduce the SP cost of Bash by a total of 20%. That means a level 20 Bash will only consume 15 SP. Next, get 9 Strength runes for plus 9 Strength. 
After that, unlock free Sword Mastery and Power Runes which will give a total of additional 180% attack bonus for Sword Mastery. Next, we can get the 8 Advanced Sword Mastery Runes which will give a total of plus 8% Ignore Death when using Sword-type weapons. Then we have free Ignore Death Runes which will increase Ignore Death by a total of 5%. And lastly, you may opt to get the 4 Imposition Manus in Power Runes which will give a total of plus 20% attack provided by Imposition Manus. Once you've become a Super Novice and unlock the Tier 3 Runes, you can activate the following additional runes. First, we have 2 new Bash and Power Runes, each of which will give plus 10% Bash skill damage. Thus, you'll have plus 120% Bash damage when all 12 runes are activated. After that, activate the 6 Inspiration Blessing Runes which will give a total of plus 60 attack and plus 60 magic attack brought about by the Inspiration skill. That means Inspiration all in all will now give 160 attack and magic attack. Next, get 6 Card Boost Boost Runes which grant a total of plus 120 extra attack and plus 12% extra movement speed while the card boost is still active. Then get 2 new Strength Runes which will give a total of plus 3 strength. And lastly, we can opt to get the free Imposition Manus Magic Runes which will give a total of plus 60 magic attack and refined magic attack when using the Imposition Manus skill. This would be useful if you have the Magic Sword Rune which we'll discuss shortly. As for your remaining contribution points, just allocate them on nearby attack nodes. You may also put points on Int and Magic Attack Runes if you have high magic attack percentage in your Magic Sword Advanced Rune. Now that we've covered the Acer Monument runes, let's cover some of the notable advanced runes. For this build, the most important class S rune to obtain is the Magic Sword rune. As mentioned previously, this is a rune that can include 10% to up to 100% of your magic attack in the calculation of the damage output of your bash skill. Prioritize getting this class S rune as soon as possible so that your bash can get more damage from your stored magic attack. Another effect of this rune is that it increases the overall damage of Bash by 1% to 30%. And for its third and final effect, it can double the deposit effect of the Bongan card which means Strength will play a bigger role in increasing your Bash damage. However, this effect does not commonly get activated, so celebrate if you are lucky to have one even if the percentages you get from the other effects are subpar. As for the class A rune, you should aim to get the Sharp Blade Pursuit rune. This will lower the target's movement speed by 1-50% to when landing the bash skill and will increase your own movement speed by 1-50% to if the target is killed by the bash skill. The additional movement speed provided by this rune will definitely boost your farming efficiency as you'll get to your targets more rapidly. And lastly for the class B runes, we have the Sword Practice rune which will give 0.1-5% to Ignore Death and 0.1-5% to damage increase when equipping a sword weapon. Another class B rune is the Breath Solidification rune which will give each Spirit Bomb from the Cult Spirit skill additional 1-20 to attack. As for the Attribute runes, prioritize upgrading the Annihilation Attack rune, Penetration Attack rune, Armor Breaking Attack Rune, and Assault Attack Rune. Then for the buff runes, level up your Strength Buff Rune, Size Buff Rune, and Int Buff Rune. Next, let's dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. In general, we should equip items and cards that increase Strength, Physical Attack, Damage, Penetration, and Ignore Death to inflict higher bash damage. If you have a Magic Sword Advanced Rune that has high magic attack damage, then using items that boost int and magic attack will also increase the damage of Bash. But do take note that M Pen, M Damage, and Ignore M Death will not affect the damage of Bash since it will still be treated as physical damage even if magic attack is included in the damage calculation. For weapons, you need to use the Nagan. This is the best option for the Bash build since at level 10 Bash, it increases the damage of the skill by 100% and also adds an extra 50% damage to medium-sized monsters. At the late stages of the game, you may synthesize your Negan to Blade of Frenzy or Blade of Rage, which gives additional attack and ignore death. As for enchantment, you should aim for either the Sharp Blade or Morel 4th enchantment for increased melee attack or ignore death respectively. As for weapon cards, it will depend on the monster you're farming. 
Just use an appropriate element, size, or race card to boost damage. As an example, if you are farming Dark Merchant which is of Earth Element, Medium Size, and Demi Human Race, then you can inlay your weapon with two of each or a combination of the following cards. Memblood card, Skeleton Miner card, and Hydra card. For the offhand, you may use the Rasa Bracelet for a plus 25% Ignore Death. Ideally, it should be refined to plus 12 and upgraded to tier 9 for additional attack and strength. As for enchantment, you should aim for the armor breaking forth enchantment which grants physical penetration. For the offhand slot, you may place cards that increase damage to certain elements by 5%. Examples are the Draco card for Earth Element and Dark Shadow card for Dark Monsters. Next for the armor, the most cost effective to use is a tier 3 tights since it grants a total of plus 8% attack. However, the most expensive yet powerful alternative to tights is a plus 10 or plus 15 tier 10 staunch armor. This is because it grants a huge boost in strength, dex, attack, and magic attack. You can couple it with a staunch ring for more attack and magic attack. At the late stages of the game, you may synthesize your staunch armor to the chosen's armor which gives additional attack and magic attack. Similar with your weapon, you should aim for either the Sharp Blade or Morale Fourth Enchantment for increased melee attack and ignore death respectively. As for armor cards, you may place an Archer Skeleton Star card for plus 2 strength and plus 5% attack, Moonex Star card for plus 15% ignore death, or an Ag of card for plus 5% magic attack. Up next for garments, the best option is the Ancient Cape since it ignores the defense of targets by 15%. Upgrading and refining it will give additional strength and attack. As for enchantment, just aim for a high attack or damage increase stat. And as for the garment slot, you may inlay a Vagabond Wolf card for a plus 4 strength. For foot gears, the Rune Boots would be the best option as it gives both attack and magic attack. Similar with the garment, you should aim for a high attack or damage increase enchantment on your Rune Boots. As for foot gear cards, you can use either a Chon Chon card for plus 2 strength or a Unit 01 card from the Ava event which gives plus 10 attack, plus 2 strength, and plus 2 dex. If you have the Magic Sword Advanced Rune, you can also use the Familiar Star card for plus 3% and plus 20 magic attack, or the Black Witch Star card for plus 20 magic attack and plus 2 ints. For accessories, get a Staunch Ring to activate the set effect with the Staunch Armor which gives plus 5% to both attack and magic attack. As for the other accessory, you may use either a Strength Ring for boosting physical attack or an Orleans Gloves for boosting magic attack. Take note that buying an Orleans Gloves with Sharp Blade Forth Enchantment would be easier since there is less competition. As for accessory cards, you may inlay a Zipper Bear Star card for a plus 10 hit and plus 3% attack and magic attack, Mantis card for a plus 5 strength, Cobalt card for a plus 4 strength, or any race or element damage modifiers depending on the mobs you're farming. Examples are the Ultraman card for Brute and Demon Monsters, or the Kaho card for Earth Monsters. Lastly, for headgears, these are the suggested items. For the head, you may use a Cat Ear Berry, Majestic Goat, Merchant's Hat, Rudolph's Horn, Golden Antenna, or a Plus 10 Helmet of Orc Hero. As for Gacha Headwear, you may use a Starlight Ship, Frost Winter Whisperer Set, Norma the Unicorn, Nethog's Poison Fang, or Thunder God's Kabuto. For a headwear card, you may inlay an Andre Star card for additional pen and ignore death, or an Aegira Star card for additional attack and plus 2 to all attributes. For the face, the current best in slot is the Frost Masquerade Mask Catch item. If you have this item, make sure that you have 3 or more attributes that reach a total of 99 since you'll gain plus 10 attack and plus 1% attack for every attribute that reaches that amount. Other alternatives are the Nut on Head or the Eye of Dawn. For the mouth, use the Dream Move Silk Gacha item for a plus 4% pen. Other options are the Pipe, Chocolate Donuts, and Experiment Mask. For the back, some of the options are the Devil Wing, Baby Owl, Steward Briefcase, or Hydra. As for the Gacha back gear, you may choose among any of the following. Frost Mistletoe, Starlight Sweetie, The Blue Islet Sea, Thunder Taiko, Moonlight Swing, Plus 6 Bright Light, Swan's Elegance, Angel Wing Feather, Deer Bone, Snow Mirror, or the Golden Sand Emblem. And lastly for the tail, you may use either the Porco Picha, 
or mechanical tail. As for gotcha options, we have the Gut Swing, Wind Perch Drake, Golden March, Faraday Veruchi Tail, and Flower Pistol. As for pets, you may choose any of the following. Joltrish for plus 40 attack and plus 2% pen. Moonlight Flower for plus 2% pen. Desert Wolf Baby, Peko Peko, or Alice for plus 5% ignore death. Neveruchi, Smokey, or Minoras for plus 40 attack. Lastly, here are some tips you need to take note of when farming. For your auto skill slots, put in Bash and your self buffs. Blessing, Imposition Manus, Call Spirits, Cart Boost, Overthrust, and Inspiration. Since you'll be using a lot of self buffs, you may want to use the Adventure Skill Prepare for Elite to cast a maximum of 5 buffs at the same time. When starting out as an advanced novice, you can use Bash to farm Green Petite or Sky Petite in the Glassheim outskirts. Sky Petite drops Hand of God and Rough and Lunyomu, while Green Petite drops Armor Shard and Rough Eridicon. Use Flame Heart against Green Petite and Great Nature against Sky Petite. After reaching level 90, you can farm Cypher from Dark Priest at Glassheim Churchyard. Use Flame Heart for higher damage output. After reaching level 101, you may go to Clock Tower Basement 1 and farm Phenomenas which are of Water Element. Just use Rough Wind to boost your bash damage output. If you would like to gain higher job EXP, you can farm Orc Lady using Flame Heart. Another option is to farm Cruisers in the Toy Factory first floor. They are of neutral element and formless race, so just equip your weapon with a Peko Peko Egg card for higher damage output. At level 116, you can farm Earth Element monsters such as Geographers and Marmots in the Ain Brookfield since they give huge job EXP. Again, just use Flame Heart to boost damage. At level 126, you may go to the Homunculus Lab basement first floor to third floor and target Removal and Dark Merchant for farming. However, you need to be careful as MVP monsters can spawn near you while farming. Next to boost damage, you may eat cooked foods that increase attack, penetration, and ignore death such as the Satisfied Peas and the original Will Seafood Soup. In addition, we could also consume strength meals for higher physical attack and melee damage. Another way to boost damage is through our praying cards. Prioritize getting pen, ignore death, and attack, and for the elemental praying cards, prioritize fire damage. And for my last and final tip, you need to invest in your raw attack and magic attack which I have talked about in my previous videos. Having a huge physical and magic attack will definitely synergize with your skills, runes, cards, and equipment to further enhance your bash damage. Alright, so far we discussed the most recommended stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, pets, and tips for the Super Novice bash build. I hope this guide was helpful in setting up the foundation for your character. As mentioned earlier, the Super Novice has a wide variety of skills and offers a lot of flexibility, so this bash build is only one of the many ways we can build our Super Novice. In our next video, we'll feature the Super Novice Cart Attack build, which is another effective way of farming with this job class. Feel free to comment down below if you have suggestions on what you want to see next. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.